Check out a brand new book out right now called I'm Sorry This Apology Took So Long by author Therese Terrell McKnight. Now, this book is a personal chronicle of poetry written about this brother's journey towards finding love in his life, accepting himself and embarking on his path towards forgiveness and renewal. And as you know, poetry is a way to speak from the heart. So this is a great book if you are a fan of poetry. Check out the book I'm Sorry This Apology Took So Long, available right now on Amazon and Kindle. Family, check out the brand new audio book novel entitled Then the Earth Swallowed Them Whole, The Secret of Circular 3591. Now, this thriller novel is about a story that takes place in the 1940s deep in the sundown towns of Florida where this mysterious document leak caused a bunch of chaos. You want to know what happened? Check out the audiobook. Go to Amazon.com and check it out right now and be sure to follow the author, E.J. Wade, at official E.J. Wade on Instagram. Then the Earth Swallowed Them Whole, available right now on Amazon. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror Root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Boom, there it is. <clears throat> How are you guys living? Getting everything together over here, ladies and gentlemen. Getting everything together, putting everything on my social media while I'm talking to the family. How are y'all doing, family? Hope you guys had a great week so far. Hope you guys are having a great weekend so far. Getting everything Hold together. Oops, let me turn my microphone down here, my, my volume down. Well, we got a lot of folks in the room already because I'm on time. Look at that. I am on time, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just throw this on my Facebook. And why don't all of you guys, ladies and gentlemen, let me have you. You got your root work lavender. Boy, y'all been going crazy over that lavender, bro. That root work lavender. We got a lot in stock, but we're, we're letting y'all know we do have some other scents that y'all can get. Everybody, even last night at the museum, everybody was bum-rushing the lavender. <clears throat> so we do have other scents, ladies and gentlemen. We, we're, we appreciate <clears throat> you getting the lavender, but there are five other scents that you can get as well, all right, that are unique and good in their own right. But we're here, man. I'm, I'm glad everybody's tuning in, man. It's been a busy weekend over here. And uh, while we're waiting on everybody to get in the room, why don't you guys give me a nice retweet? Retweet the link to the broadcast here to let everybody know that we are live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Give me that retweet. Yeah, the ladies and the men love the, the lavender. Everybody likes that lavender. That lavender is really hitting different with a lot of people. That vanilla, yeah, that, that's I like I like all of them. Yeah, that vanilla is not no joke. Somebody said, are we selling on Amazon? Here's the thing. We're, we're getting offers to sell on Amazon because we set everything up. The problem is we keep selling out on our own website. That's been the problem. We haven't even had a chance to send any um, of the product to Amazon because we're selling so many on our own website. I mean, we're selling out just, you know, it's selling out very, very fast. Uh, it lasts long. I'm telling you, uh, the people who wear it, this stays on you, man. You can put a little bit on it. It stay on you for, really for a couple of days. Now, you're not, you know, you're supposed to bathe and put on some fresh the next day, but Man, I, I've sat up in the house working at home and, you know, 
I, I, I might miss a bath when I'm sitting at home, just kind of grinding the midnight oil. And I've gone a couple of days wearing this stuff and no must, no must crep up on me. You understand? So yeah, that root work is not a joke. Go to root work. Yeah, it's a, it's a good problem. Yeah, we, we got good problems. Uh, but I, again, a good problem is very good. We're great, grateful that people are buying the lavender, but damn, y'all can buy some other scents. <laughs> that lavender is just like, woo, that, that lavender is going crazy. But first of all, First of all, what's up, Nikki the God? What's up, D? What's up, um, is War Talk in here? Michael Warden, my brother Michael Warden. Um, first of all, I got to thank everybody who came out to the Hidden History Museum last night. Who came out to the Hidden History Museum last night? Do we have a tether in here? Let's throw, if you got some root work, just open the root work and that'll run them off. All right, just do it like that. That'll run the tethers off. Um, and this is the um, citrus charm. We got different FBA themed scents. This is citrus charm, ladies and gentlemen. All right, but listen, listen. Um, last night, we got to thank everybody who came out to the Hidden History Museum last night. Who all came out? If you were in the room now and you came out to the Hidden History Museum last night, um, give me um, give me a thumbs up. Just give me a thumbs up, ladies and gentlemen. We had a, a blast last night. We had a blast last night, ladies and gentlemen, at the museum. Fun times. Uh, packed house last night. The caterer that we had, a brother called Hood Tacos. Hood Tacos. The tacos were phenomenal. The tacos were phenomenal. What's up, Mike C? Nicety girl. What's up, Nicety girl? Where were you? I didn't see you last night. Nicety, did you get some of them tacos? Them tacos were on hit. What's up, Spirit Wonder? The only complaint was that I think because a lot of people went to the, the food stand at once, there was kind of a delay for people getting their food. That was the only complaint. And a lot of comedians were joking about how long it was taking the food to, to cook. They were like, are they making the taco shells from scratch? I mean, they were clowning a little bit because... Um, the caterer, I don't think they expected everybody to kind of show up right at the same time. And he was saying, next time, we'll, we'll do a more buffet style to make it faster. But I think they thought that everybody was going to be like a few people coming up, um, making individual orders. But no, everybody kind of rushed them at the same time. So it, it, it had a little delay. A lot of people got their food early, but a lot of the people who came later, it was a little delay. But the food was so good. Were, weren't those comedians funny? First of all, we got to give a shout out to our brother Dwan B. Dwan B came through. He pulled together a, a nice array of hilarious comedians. Those comics were funny as hell, man. Weren't they funny? The comics were hilarious last night. All of them were funny, man. Um, shout out to Ruben. Ruben was hilarious. Slink Johnson from Black Jesus and Grand Theft Auto. He was hilarious. Kevin Tate rocked it. Who was the last brother? That brother was funny as hell. What was the last brother's name? That brother was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, the brother said it's going to take three to five business days to get the food. Yeah, they were clowning about how slow the food was. That last brother was very funny. I, I'd never heard of the last brother. He was hilarious. That brother was hilarious. And let me let me give you guys just a, a little sneak peek of um, um I didn't post the event because you know I don't like to to film the comics whole set because you know a lot of them are touring. But um I I, I filmed a little bit. Let me show you. I give you a clip. This is Kevin Tate, and Kevin Tate worked with us before. <laughs> Kevin Tate worked with us on the Coon Train years ago. So this is a very funny brother. So this is Kevin Tate, comedian. 
Very funny. So this was last night. Just giving y'all a sneak peek. This is only a few seconds. I'll show this. So that's us having a ball last night. Where were you, nicety girl? Hold on, hold on. Minutes, you can't even get y'all from the 90s from a time when you hung up on motherfucker. They knew they was getting hung up on. <laughs> now these falls so fast, you can't get your shit off. Like, you wanna get your shit off. It don't hit. <laughs> Fuck you and the train you roll in on, bitch. Boom, boom. <laughs> shit don't hit. In the 90s, nigga, you knew you was getting hung up on. What the rock said? So yeah, that's us last night, man. Fun times. We had a great time last night. Great, great time, man. And I, I thank everybody for coming through. Shout out to um, some of the OGs came through. Shout out to Brother Macaroni and Ruben. Y'all know those bean pies that we had there? We had some delicious bean pies. We're giving away some delicious bean pies. I gotta thank, and you guys gotta thank, some OG LA players came through just on some some G love. They came through. They were like, "Yo, Flex, we got bean pies for the family." Just on some community love, they came through and and gave us bean pies to give to everybody. And some of y'all were putting them damn bean pies in your pocket. I saw bean pies in pockets and purses. Those bean pies won't hit, weren't they? But shot, that's our brother, the L.A. player, is Macaroni, and his brother Ruben. Shout out to those two players. A lot of people, especially the street cats, man, they, they like doing stuff for the museum. They like just the idea of it. We always get a lot of love from the street cats, man. The street cats love them. The, man, the food was great. The bean pies were good. Weren't them pies good as hell? Because I went out there to get me another one. All them shits was gone. Yeah, them bean pies and tacos, y'all don't understand. Yeah? We were in there eating good, drinking good, partying good. It was popping. But shout out to Macaroni and Ruben, man. Shout out to good, good brothers, man. Old school L.A. hustlers, man. And... You know, the street cats always like to see constructive things in the community. They love to see that. You know, they because real street cats, man, they, they're going to promote something that will keep folks out of the damn streets. That's why, man, a lot of the street people, the street cats, the hustlers, they are very supportive of the museum because they understand that young people can be very influenced by certain things, so they want the young folks to go in that direction. Most hustlers, man, you don't want to encourage that for younger people if they have an alternative. The last thing you want to do is try to get them out there going through what you went through, through because the hustlers know most people are not going to make it through that. When the hustlers get out the game, they get out the streets and they're starting to do something constructive, they're adamant about some of the young people not going in that direction because they know what it took for them to survive. And they know some of the their colleagues didn't survive that. You understand? Hustlers are, are, are I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the real ones. Some real, real OGs. What you, you got people who try to act like hustlers. They ain't. I'm talking about some real true to the game OGs. They don't want... Um, the young folks going in that direction whatsoever. So when we have something in the community that offers an alternative, the hustlers are the main ones who are supporting it. And I shout out, got to give a shout out to all the L.A. hustlers, the L.A. players who show love to the museum. Got to give a shout out to them. Yeah, the streets love it. Yeah, stand up guys. That's why they they always dropping off bags. <laughs> They, 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 they always coming through with something. They are ultra supportive of the museum, man. So, yeah, that L.A. love, is it, it really hits different. And just love from all over the place, because people were coming in from all over the place. There were some people who came in last night from South Carolina. Um, people were coming in from everywhere. 
And as you see, I'm very hands on. I'm 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 out. I'm in the mix. Um, when um before the the night got started, I was you know helping my staff bring stuff in inside the museum, bringing in drinks, you know, bringing in some food. Somebody saw me on the streets, like, hey, Dorit. I was shocked to see you out there lifting boxes. Yeah, I'm I'm in the mix, man. Yes, indeed. I'm I'm in the mix. I'm out there licking. Y'all saw me last night when my assistant left because she had she left at uh, midnight and we went a little bit over midnight. I got I was working the cash register. Yeah. We had the bartender doing the thing. We had um, my other brothers in the back because I hire a lot of people in the community. I hire a lot of brothers and sisters in the community. And as you saw, at the end of the night, I was meeting and greeting people. I was working the cash register, giving people discounts and deals. So I'm right there in the mix, man. I'm hands on. You'll see me. Hell, if, the, if we need help at the bar, I'll make your ass a drink. If there's something going on in the bathroom, you'll see me in there plunging. I'm hands on, man. I'm that, Not only that, after last night, I got, you know, yeah, the bartender was killing them drinks. Man, how strong was, because I'm not a drinker, how strong were them drinks? Because we got, I got all types of vodka and tequila and all that shit was gone. I had all types of big vats of vodka and tequila and all of it was gone. So y'all y'all were getting y'all full drink on. That bartender was very liberal with the drinks, wasn't she? <laughs> she must have been real liberal with them drinks. So no wonder y'all were having a good time. Them free drinks was hitting, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Man, so yeah, I'm, I'm out there in the mix with y'all, man. Having a good time with the family. A hands-on is the way to be. Yes, indeed. So we I, last night I got out of there. She had like 12, 31, something like that. And then I had to get up this morning and go to our warehouse because we are, we had to get the rest of y'all packages together. So I had to go to, um, had to be up at like 8 to get to the warehouse out here at 10 because we had the staff out here, a whole different building and business. So we're getting all of your packages out before we, we're trying to get all of your um, Arata Sussi packages out before the holidays. So everybody's stuff should be in the mail. If it's not already, it will be in the mail by tomorrow. We have the last batch today. So everybody's packages will be in the mail by tomorrow. So we we getting this stuff popping. So let me tell you something, man. When you when you run your business, man, that, that's harder than working a job. Because when you work your own business, you, you ain't got no set hours. That's the thing, man. When you are running, and I'm running multiple businesses. And when you run businesses, man, sometimes you got to be up at one and be back up working at another business early in the morning. And when you're, you got an employee who left, who got to leave early, you got to go ahead and handle that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, new Bucci Bear episode coming this week. And you know what, family? This Bucci Bear episode is so damn funny. I'm thinking about having a screening of it at the museum next week, next weekend. That's how funny this thing is. I'm thinking about... Um, inviting people to the museum to watch it at the museum to get a, a, a live viewing of it. We haven't done that yet. We haven't had a live screening. Oh, we only had one screening, and that was of American Maroon. We only had one film screening. But I'm thinking about doing that, having a live screening of the Bucci Bear episode. Because this one is very, very funny. Oh, you got to see. I, I'm not giving no spoilers. Hold on. I got, there's like a little clip that I put on Twitter. Hold on. Now, y'all got to see it because I, I I don't want to give no spoilers. You got to see it. It's funny. Hold on. Let me, I put up a little sneak peek clip. Hold on. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There you go. All right. Here's a little, um, oh, here's a little 10 second sneak peek. Of Bucci Bear. <laughs> Hold on. This is a little 10 second sneak peek. 
Alright, it's so, it's very funny, hold on. Oh no, don't say that boss, don't say that. Trust me, I'm on it. Please drop me off at my Bucci mobile. Oh no, right. don't say So, it's very ignorant. I'm telling y'all, this is the funniest one yet. This is the funniest one yet, family. Oh, this is the funniest one. <laughs> You didn't see the last one? It's go to it's here on the YouTube channel. Just go to Bucci Bear Three. Man, <laughs> yeah, this one is very very funny. All right. Yeah, we, we we hit a lot of people in here. We we do a, we parody quite a few people in this one in the new one. Um. But let's get to what we're talking about. We got 4,000 people in here about to get 5,000. Um, listen. Listen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, right now, in, in the, the topic for today is the Diddy effect. We're talking about what was going on with Diddy and the effect that that has had. You know, as you know, Puff Daddy, Diddy. Um, some weeks ago was accused by his ex Cassie of doing some real freaky stuff that opened the floodgates because right after she said that they made a quick settlement. Now there's blood in the water. Now that that settlement was made very quickly, that has brought a lot of people out from the woodworks against Diddy. And now that effect has gone beyond Diddy and it's going on to other people now. Other people are getting into this Diddy effect. There's a lot of accusations being thrown out here now because there's money on the table. And there's talk about these guys' sexual preferences out here. And you have a lot of legitimate claims. You have a lot of clout-chasing claims. Like, for example, a lot of these dudes who... Or who were around Diddy, who claimed they were around Diddy. You know, some of it is legitimate, I, I assume, but some of it seems clout chaserish. You know, if you were around, why weren't you saying anything? See, that's my thing. Why weren't you saying anything if you saw all this stuff? Why you, years later, you trying to get a, a couple of dollars off a podcast by saying you saw this, that, and the third? Yeah? But listen. So now there's a new guy. Well, not he's an actor, Christian Keys. The Christian Keys is a uh, male actor, male model, and he made a video talking about how a powerful man in Hollywood was sexually harassing him for years. Now let me play a clip of Christian Keys talking about his alleged sexual harassment from a powerful Hollywood figure. All right, hold on one second. He didn't name no names. He didn't name any names, but, and I haven't heard this whole rant and I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but I'll play some of it, hold on. Um, good evening, hope everybody's doing amazing. Um, I am, I've been speaking to my brother about making, a declaration of my experience. Um, what I experienced with certain powers that be that were moving inappropriately. And I really, like it's in my bone marrow to discuss that because thankfully God built me the way that he built me, but I, I'm not sure, you know, based on this person's claims and, and brags um, that he's literally got. At the same time this person was sexually, sexually harassing me for years. Um, he was claiming, you know, that he had multiple young black men on the payroll and they just had to show up 
when he was when he requested them to be there and clearly that's why it was it felt to him that it was okay to say these things and i, I really i want to have these discussions i want to be transparent with y'all okay so hey, the, the rant goes on a bit okay it kind of goes on i want to play the whole thing i just wanted to give you an idea and a lot of people assume he was talking about Tyler Perry. That's why I put up the Winston Jerome thumbnail. That comes from the Boondocks. The Boondocks did an episode where they were doing a parody of Tyler Perry. And in the parody, they were saying how Tyler Perry has all these dudes around. Well, Winston Jerome has a bunch of dudes around and there's some weird stuff going on. And, and, and I'm not saying, I'm just saying what the, the cartoon episode was. Now, some people are saying that this is Tyler Perry he's talking about. Some people say it's not Tyler Perry because he's still working for Tyler Perry, right? I don't know. So I don't know if he's talking about Tyler Perry. I don't know. And nobody knows for sure. Nobody knows for sure. But the thing is, he goes on this rant for a minute and doesn't name any names. Doesn't name names. And here's the thing. He said it was a black man, so it was a black man. So who, who could it be? I don't know. Here's the thing. If you're going to make a rant like that, what's your purpose if you're not going to name a name? If you're going to go and make a rant like that, and uh, some people were asking, okay, so why are you saying this? Are you using us as your therapist? This is something that you should go to your therapist about. That's what a lot of people are saying. Why talk about the activities of some unknown person? You understand? If you're not going to name who it is. Somebody said Lee Daniel. Nobody knows. Because people are just assuming it's Tyler Perry. Some people, there's other names, Lee Daniels, that, that name is being thrown out there. So they're throwing out Quincy's name. You know, they're throwing out a whole bunch of names. They're throwing out a bunch of, I mean, the, the general public is throwing out a bunch of names. And, and yeah, 15 years later, so why, in a legitimate question, why are you saying this now? If you're not going to name names to warn other people, some people look at it as a potential bag grab. Now, I'm not saying that none of this stuff didn't happen to him. I'm pretty sure it did. I'm pretty sure some weird stuff did happen to dude. I'm pretty sure it did. I'm not doubting that whatsoever. Now, here's the thing. How down were you? That's a question. 15 years, were you down? Because eh, ain't nobody going to, no dude going to harass me for no damn 15 years. You ain't going to harass me for 15 minutes. You feel me? Certain cats, you're not going to be harassed like that for five minutes, let alone 15 years. If somebody's doing that for 15 years, there's some level of complicity in it. Some people would assume. Some people will, would assume some of that shit is consensual. That's, that's an assumption that some people will make. Again, I'm not trying to minimize Mr. Key's experience because any kind of harassment is not a, that's not cool. But 15 years... Some people will look at this and say, hey, this sounds like it could possibly might be a little shakedown. Right? This might be, hey, some people will be like, hey, what if old boy sees money on the table with Diddy? You see Diddy and these people making big payouts and there's big ramifications hitting them based on allegations. So, Hey, you got an actor out here 
there's an actor strike that just they just let off the actor strike. So a lot of these actors ain't working, especially the black ones. Their money ain't hidden like it's supposed to be. So now you come out here, oh man, boy, yeah. I went through some things, man. There's somebody, somebody out here, boy, they was doing stuff to me. I don't want to say who, but Lord, the Lord's going to walk with me. Jesus be with me, but somebody was, somebody had a hankering for my pussy. You, 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 you're doing that, but you ain't saying no names. <clears throat> so you throw something out there and some people would assume you get behind the scenes and make a call like, hey, whoop de whoop. You saw the video I made. Now it could go real bad for you. <clears throat> because now look at all the publicity his rant has gotten. And he hasn't named a name. So look at all the publicity it has received. So now people are on edge, especially the media. So he whoever he names. That person is going to be ruined financially. He done made this rant and made these accusations. So if whoever he names, if he came out and put somebody's name out there, that they're going to get the Diddy treatment. And they know it. They know their, their endorsements or whatever. Them shits is going to dry up. So he, I think Christian knows that. So is Christian... Behind the scenes, I, I'm not making an accusation. I'm just throwing questions out there. I'm just throwing questions out there because some people would assume, some people might think, well, damn, this dude might be on the back channels making a phone call like, hey, um, Mr. Producer, now you, you saw the buzz I got talking about some of the stuff you uh, been doing with a player for 15 years. Um, it would behoove you to let me hold something so I can keep my mouth shut. Yeah? It would behoove you if you give me a few million of them things so I won't say nothing. Yeah? And I'm pretty sure he does have receipts. I'm pretty sure he does have receipts. But yeah, y'all better understand there's a lot of extortion that goes on, especially with some of these bloggers, some of these um, gossip bloggers, because some of these bloggers, that's why you see, you'll see a lot of these bloggers clicked in with big celebrities because they hold, they dangle a threat over them. They say to some of these celebrities, hey, I'll keep this dirt that I have on you. I'll keep that out of the blogs. Yeah, I got dirt on you. I got dirt on your dad. I got dirt on your mama. And I won't put that in the blog if you give me some tickets to your tour. All right? Give me some backstage passes to your tour. I won't put out this information I got about you. So there's a lot of that extortion blackmail thing that goes on in the industry. Yeah? And some people would possibly assume this might be an extortion thing. It might be celebrity extortion. Yeah? So we got to understand how the Diddy effect is working now. Man, there's blood in the water, man. People, the sharks smell blood in the water. The sharks are swimming around. I'm not saying Christian is a shark, but I'm saying that Diddy effect is real. People are um, bringing their receipts because now they see there's money on the table, and we gotta watch who you. You know, you gotta watch what you do, and you gotta watch who you are around, and you gotta understand how the game is out here. Your know, real journalism, oh, that's out the window. That's out the window. Ain't no real journalism now. It's all everybody trying to get a bag at this point. Everybody's trying to get a bag. We got almost 6,000 people in here. Shout out to everybody in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to the family. And speaking of bag, we're still letting um, the political establishment know that we need our bag. We need the, the tangibles. We need those reparations. Um, 
I've been doing a lot of interviews lately about that. Um, I'm going to do some more this week, um, especially with the international press talking about the reparations movement here. Um, the Democrats are in trouble, major, so they're trying to do their fear-mongering tactics as usual. They're sitting up here trying to use Trump scare tactics. Um, Trump is going to get us, oh, boogeyman, boogeyman Trump. And we're not going for that. We're not going for the whole Trump boogeyman nonsense. And now the Democratic Shields, they're going on the, the MSNBCs. Um, they're doing all of their doublespeak. They're doing all of their plebiscite babbling. They're doing all of their um, parlor trick speeches, acting like, because they know they're in trouble with the black vote. They know. So now they got their Democratic Shields going on these shows talking about all the stuff Biden is doing for black people without being specific about what it is. Now listen to this. Listen to the Jedi mind tricks right here. This is the Jedi mind tricks we keep telling people about. All right, listen to this horse crap. Hold on. Well, we know the contrast. The president often says, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. Donald Trump was a disaster for black America. And we no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Donald Trump wasn't a disaster for black America. Donald, Donald Trump didn't do anything um, to collectively harm black America. All right? The Democrats are a detriment to black America. Biden has been a detriment to black America, specifically. They're dumping all of these illegal immigrants on black society, giving our tax dollars to everybody except us turning a blind eye when these race soldiers murder us left and right. So yeah, they've been a detriment to black society. Hold on. Let me play this plebiscite babble. Hold on. To the almighty, compare me to the alternative. Donald Trump was a disaster for black America and we know it and we'll make sure that folks who forgot that because, you know, it's been four years that they remember all of the things that he's done to attack and what Republicans are constantly doing now to erode voting rights, to erode uh, reproductive rights. For that ain't a black issue. See, that's a Jedi mind trick. Yeah, look at what they're doing to black people, eroding voting rights. No, no, no. The voting rights are for the illegal immigrants. That ain't for us. We already got the right to vote. We already got that. They're trying to make the, this is a con game. This is why the Democrats are losing. We're not playing that game where y'all sit up here and act like the stuff you're doing for immigrants is low key for us. No, that's for immigrant groups. You're doing that for immigrants. You're not doing that for us. Hold on. You're getting, they need the right to vote because they are not citizens. They need to, the right to vote. Hold on. That ain't, that's not our issue. To attack and what Republicans are constantly doing now to erode voting rights, to erode uh, reproductive rights for women. No, all that, if we get the right to an abortion. No, that's not a, that, that's not a gift. That's not a come up. To erode, uh, going after diversity, equity, inclusion. There's diversity, equity, inclusion. That's LGBT. All right, see? See, see the Jedi mind trick? See, that's LGBT. Diversity, equity, inclusion, that's LGBT. All right? Watch these words. They'll sit up, oh, black folks, black folks. Okay, what are you doing for black folks? Um, reproduction rights, voting rights, um, diversity, equity, inclusion. No, oh, no, 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 no. We ain't going for none of those words no more. We ain't going for none of those trick words, none of that. That ain't for us. That ain't for us. Is he a tether? He looks weird. Yeah, he looks like a Caribbean tether. So yeah, they're using all of the little trick words that we ain't going for no more. All right, let me play some more of this dude. Oh. Still there, they're still grounded in that. But we also wanna make sure that no voter, particularly black voters, do not feel as though they are taken for granted. That we see them, that we hear them, that we value them and we- Okay, that ain't enough. That's another con game. Let's not do anything for the Negroes. Let's just see them. Let's just hear them and let's just tell them we value them. That's another con game. We don't want to rant to you. We need you to break bread. We're not sitting here trying to just let you listen. 
while we're telling you what we need. You know, mm-hmm. Oh, 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 okay. Mm-hmm. Your voice is being heard. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Mm-hmm. You want what? You want job? Okay. Mm-hmm. Damn that. It's time to do something. You're not hearing the illegal immigrants. You guys are providing resources for them. You're not hearing the LGBT community, the white ones. You're providing tangible resources for them. You're not hearing the Native American tribes, the red ones and the $5 Indians. You're breaking bread for these people. I don't want to do no listening session. It's time to break bread. All right, let me play some more of this guy. Where's this guy from? Eyes just a bucking. We want black men particularly to understand that. We know that black men want more security. They want more economic security and physical security. They want to be able to provide for their families. So we want them to know how this administration has made that happen. How? What, 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 how, how have you made that happen? Y'all not going to get out of here lying. Yeah, they all, these big old juicy tethers all look the same. And we will continue to go that. I'm in barbershops uh, every month all over this country. I was with Cory Booker in South Carolina doing that. This first in the nation. If y'all don't stop with that we in barbershops nonsense. Primary in South Carolina is going to be centered on that. Mm -hmm. This is the first time instead of black folks being at the back of the bus, hell, we are driving the bus. And that is because of Joe Biden. Oh, God, these Democratic shields. No president before ever decided to take on Iowa and New Hampshire be kicking off this. And now in a, a state where 40 percent of enslaved people came to this country, the descendants of those enslaved people will pick the most powerful person on the face of this earth. And that it happened because of Joe Biden. None of that made sense. This big old plebiscite babbling juicy buffoon said none of that made sense. He just said. None of that made sense. This is a big, juicy, babbling tether. South Carolina, which is your home state, South yes. Carolina, which catapulted um, then candidate Joe Biden from back of the pack to president of the United States. DNC. Oh, goodness. So, family, expect more of this plebiscite babble. The three card Monte, where they sit up and babble, then act like they just explain what you got, what was done for you. Well, see, yeah, diversity, equity, inclusion, and then, you know, on, you're not going to be on the back of the bus, you're going to be driving the bus, and then you're going to get some voting rights, and then you're going to get some some um, um, some um, reproductive rights, and then you better understand, we know we want you to listen, and we want to we wanna, wanna, we wanna hear you, we're going to go to the barbershops, we want to let black people know, particularly black men, you matter, and you got to understand who's giving you all of these great things is Joe Biden. Nigga, what are you talking about? You just babbled a whole bunch of nothing. That dude just said a whole bunch of nothing burgers and then said, hey, thank Joe Biden for all of this good stuff you getting. What stuff? Just babble. That's not working, dude. We're not playing the plebiscite babble game. And where is he from? Talking about South Carolina, his home state. Where is that dude from? Where is he from? Man, please, the Democrats ain't giving us no damn protection. Man, most of the harm that came to us came from Democratic cities. Man, we in order to punish these race soldiers like the Derek Chavins and people like that, we had to take to the streets, man. We had to go around the Democrats in order to get some damn justice done. Man, let me tell you something. And speaking of Derek Chavin, you know, they, they said they poked him up in jail and all that. But somebody exposed how Derek Chavin has been protected by these Democratic police forces for years. Because him kneeling on people's knee, that was his signature move. Derek Chavin kneeling on the, not, not kneeling on the knee, kneeling on people's necks. That was Derek Chavin's signature move. He'd been doing that. And they'd been covering it up for years. They've been covering that up for years. Him up here kneeling on people's backs or necks. You dig? 
They've been doing that for years. Let me show y'all some of this. Somebody had a thread about that. How Derek Chabin's been doing that for years. And the police, they went out of their way in these Democratic-run cities. They protected this dude for years. And the only reason he got caught doing this, somebody caught it on film. It was somebody outside of the police who caught it on film. This is Derek Chabin back in 2017 doing the same thing. He's doing the same thing, kneeling on somebody's damn neck. That's his signature move. People had to sue to get this footage. So this is his move. He's been doing that. You think? Hold on. Let me let me get some more pictures here. This is him, a 14-year-old black child. He's choking him out. This again, 2017. This is Derek Chavin. Look at him choking out a 14-year-old black child. And then doing the whole kneeling on the neck thing. This dude, that's his move. He's been doing that, family. They know about this. They've been know, knew about him. All right? So that was this dude's signature move. So, yeah, and this was under the damn Democrats. Yeah? Yes, I did hear about... Eden, Alex, Anna Morado getting arrested. Yes, I did hear about that. For those who don't know, um, hold on, let me let me pull that up. Hold on one second. Let me pull that up. This guy, this white Hispanic, this white Hispanic, and the white liberals been trying to co-sign this guy. Um, this guy here. And we've had problems with this dude. A lot of us out here in Los Angeles, a lot of black activists, we've had problems with this damn dude and his crew. Eden, Alex, and Amarado. See, what this guy does, him and, and this is what police have accused him of, and we've been saying this about this guy. Street vendor activists arrested, accused of manipulating social media videos. The police said this guy is basically a fake activist and they sit up here acting like they're doing some Robin Hood stuff to help street vendors, but they they go around vandalizing and assaulting people. This is what the police saying for internet clout because they get clicks and they make money off the clicks, which is what we've been saying. Um, and Ed Morado is known for posting videos on social media alleging showing street vendors being attacked, but law enforcement claims some of the videos are manipulated to seek attention and profit. Yeah, so his whole thing, and let me show y'all what he looks like. We've had, we've personally had problems with this dude. All right? We've actually, some of us out here, we've actually been to court with some of his folks trying to stop him. We've, we've suspected part of his crew of vandalizing the Hidden History Museum. We suspected that. You understand? We've been on these guys' bumper for a minute. So what they do, they're street vendors that get robbed out here, and a lot of people who do street vending get robbed, and him and his crew, they make it seem like it's a bunch of black people doing it. So they go around talking about, oh, the black people out here robbing the street vendors, when in reality, most of the street vendors are getting robbed by other Hispanics. That's the reality. Most of these street vendors are getting robbed by other Hispanics out here. And there were a couple of incidents where dudes, some black dudes, robbed some vendors, and those dudes got disciplined by their own neighborhoods. A lot of those dudes got DP'd by their own set. Because, you know, that ain't cool. You don't get no stripes robbing some, you know, some little helpless street vendor. So you don't even get no hood props. So the, the dudes who do that, they've been disciplined. But the thing is, they try to use that to go around vandalizing black businesses and other stuff. And that that Eaton dude, this dude has been lying on folks. The, this Our sister Connie Collins, they were lying on her and she accused them of attacking her, trying to attack her. And there are other activists of Melina. She's a Black Lives Matter activist. They were allegedly going after her, trying to attack her. So they they go around trying to vandalize and, and especially going after women. 
um, doing they do little slick shit to black businesses. And there was one um, there was a gang meeting somewhere or a gang intervention thing where they had, I guess, black and brown gangs to, to have a sit down somewhere. They had something at some secret location and that Eaton dude was there. And he was in there just lying his ass off. I guess somebody was trying to holler at him about the little slick that they, the little slick shit they've been doing in the community to black folks. And I guess he was trying to justify it by bringing up me and other prominent people in the community. So my name, he brought my name up. So some of the OGs called me from this damn meeting. They called me like, "Hey man, this dude in him saying, I'm saying you called them wetbacks." Like, who, what? I said, I don't even use that term. Who? I said, who said that? This Eden dude. I said, man, get his ass on the phone. I said, man, you know me and you got some issues, dude. Don't be in there lying. Dude, and you know I already got a problem with you, dude. I got some questions for you about some vandalism, bro. When I, when I see you, bro, you might have to come up off something. You understand? Got my name in your mouth like that. Lying, dude. I don't play like that. I'm trying to get where this meeting is. I'm like, hey, where is this damn meeting happening right now? Nobody would tell me where it was. It was in some secret location. They wouldn't tell me where it was. I was going to go down there and holler at them about that. Um, but yeah, he's that kind of dude. He's a real weirdo, lying, funny style ass dude. And I, I, I want to know where that meeting was. I know Skip was there. If y'all know in LA, y'all know Skip. Skip. What's Skip Townsend? What's Skip's last name? Skip does a lot of these, um, a lot of gang intervention things. I know Skip was there, and a couple other OGs that I knew. Yeah. But yeah, that guy's been a problem. So they got his ass. They, they, the police said what we've been saying. There's a whole crew of them. And it's a conspiracy, and they they conspire to go around targeting different businesses for vandalism, assault, and a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. So that is what it is. But yeah, that's the crew. You know that we suspect of having something to do with the vandalism on our spots because they're known for doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. A lot of folks said they didn't get no notifications, but we're here, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. We are here. Did y'all hear about that? Um, there was a bank. Was it a bank or a credit union or something? And boy, they found some kind of racial disparity where boy they were discriminating against black lenders like it was goddamn 1920. What was the name of that um that lending company? Well, they found that um, black folks with damn near perfect credit, they would deny them loans, home ownership loans, and white people with janky ass credit was getting a green light. What was the name of the um, the credit thing? Navy Federal, yes. Navy Federal Credit Union. Don't ever let people tell you racism is a thing of the damn past. Yes, Navy Federal. They're still... They get behind the scenes and still do this shit right now. And then try to tell us to pull ourselves up by the damn bootstraps. And they're still doing this stuff. You yeah. think? It's the big, biggest credit union in America. The biggest credit union in America is openly practicing Jim Crow racism against us. Even if our credit is good. They were saying black people with damn near perfect credit was getting denied and, and white people with janky credit was getting approved over them. This is why I tell black people, don't let these folks run that where well, you just got to work hard. Don't ever let them run that game on you. It's that million dollars worth of whiteness. Don't ever believe that whole, hey, I'm a poor white guy. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. No, you're not. Don't ever let them run the I'm a poor white person, we the same. The, with a poor people's campaign, the poor blacks and poor whites get together. Like Neely Fuller said, ain't no such thing as a poor white person. You got a million dollars worth of whiteness. That's your backup plan. That million dollars worth of whiteness can kick in when you need it sometimes. 
Yeah. So, yeah, there's always this double standard with us. For example, man, we see how many school shootings do we see with white kids shooting up schools? Every time, every other week, there's some white kid with some kind of advanced AR. They got like all types of military grade weapons shooting up schools, killing people. It's always, well, he was a lone wolf. Nobody else was involved. We're not going to look at the ideology. We're not going to look at the websites he was looking at. We're not going to look at his parents who bought him the damn gun at, at 10 years old. We're not going to look at them. <clears throat> he was a little lone wolf. And in fact, we're not going to even put him in jail because he was, he was being bullied. So you got to understand why he shot up people. It's not his fault. He was being bullied. So they got all types of excuses for the, the, the little white killers. There's a story, man. Look at this. This black woman, her son snuck and got her gun. He shot his teacher, little black boy. He shot his teacher. This was in, um, where was this? I want to say, was it in North Carolina? Boy, they went through the mama in jail. They didn't gave the mama two years for neglect. The black mama, they didn't, her son shot somebody, shot a teacher. Boy, they hurry up and put her in and, and convicted her. Hold on. That's the mom. No comments, no comments. So they got her on a humbug charge. The, they gave her two years for using marijuana while owning a firearm. What kind of mess is that? Amanda? Yeah. So was the teacher white? Who are these white women? Was the teacher white? Hold on. Okay, who are these white women? The teacher must have been white. These We got magical white women coming in here. I call them magic white women. They're coming in here looking like the Stepford Wives. So he must, the teacher must have been white. So yeah, they're going to throw the book at somebody. If they can't throw the book at the little boy, you're going to throw it at his mama. So yeah, they got her on a humbug charge to throw her in jail with some I'm white and I say so. These school shooters, these white school shooters, boy, they never get that kind of treatment. They don't never put them white parents in jail. Yeah. So we got to understand the game out here. See, and they're very unapologetic about punishing us. You yeah. think? Speaking of that, um, Hannah Payne, you know, she got sentenced to life recently. She got sentenced to life. And remember, with Hannah Payne, um, they were trying to run the whole, she can't be racist. She has a Dominican immigrant boyfriend. Hold on. Remember that? I posted this years ago. They were trying all of that stuff. They were trying to say, I posted this a couple of years ago. We've been on that woman's bumper for the longest. But don't forget, with Hannah Payne, they were trying to run this game. Hold on. No matter what the race of the person involved in that hit and run? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hannah doesn't see Absolutely. color. Absolutely. Yeah. She does not see color. She sees right. She sees wrong. That, that's that's who she is. What are you going to do when you're going to make that, post that bail, I would imagine, today? And then what? <sighs> Hopefully just hold my daughter and never let her go, you know? But I can't do that. I mean, we have been torn apart. So so was the black man she killed. Um, so tell us your relation to Hannah. She's my girlfriend. Okay. So just tell us your reaction. How long have you, first of all, you, how long have you been dating Hannah? Like two years. So what was your... So they got a Dominican tether to sit here and cape for. We don't give a damn. So they tried, and, and they, I guess they tried to have him grow his hair out a little bit so it'll look like a fro. Dude, you're making it worse. We don't give a damn about you. What's your reaction to what she's been going through in this whole situation? What was your reaction when you first heard what happened? I didn't believe what happened, you know, in that case, because that's not Hannah at all. 
because like they say, you know, she been through like a lot of problem with job, uh, his jo her job, family, you know, it's just a lot of stuff, in, you know, that she was handled. And uh, that thing that's all that happened, you know, she just have like too much shit. Gone. Why he got half a Dominican Bayang? A lot of people are bringing race into this issue and, and pointing to that. How do you feel about that? What's your reaction to that? And by the way, who is the who is this mammy? Who are these coons in the back with the coon look? Who is these? Who is that mammy in the back? I, I never really noticed that until right now. And the and the black girl is that supposed? I think that's her friend, right? So they tried to put some coons up there, some coons and tethers, and that the the mammy on the left, she don't look FBA, does she? She don't look FBA. I don't know. That's just not true. Because you can really tell, like, all the hunters. Okay. Man, please. <laughs> just because she's smashing a damn Dominican who hate our guts, too. Double life. Like that's gonna mean something. Y'all gonna y'all y'all gonna bring out a damn tether like that's gonna move us. That's why they don't want us to delineate. Cause now we y'all y'all can't bring out no tether talking about she not nah, they said she with me. All right, give her ass life plus thirty years, nigga. That don't mean nothing. Y'all y'all sit up cockeyed and kikiing about harming us. You just as bad as her. All, yeah, all of them look like tethers, and that looked like a Caribbean mammy in the background, too. That's why we damn delineate. They thought they were going to do something. Boy, they hate that we um delineating. That that game don't work, just wheeling out a tether. No, she's not racist. No, I know she's not racist. She with me. Uh, I don't mean shit. No, no, no. We're not going for that game again. We ain't playing that game again. Man, speaking of tethers, what's up with these weird tether girls getting on social media with these weird ass dating things? A lot of these women are non FBA and they got these real weird, ridiculous dating requirements. I, I see a lot of this stuff, man. I see a lot of these weird ass women now on social media saying real weird stuff about dating. Like this right here. Well, what is this? I, I can tell that just I can tell this woman has a non-FBA vibe. Not a bad looking sister, but you know, the, the makeup goes crazy. So these women got these weird dating requirements. Now hold on, listen to this. Hold on. This is the thing, and, and hold on, hold on. Okay, y'all, we are in the middle of like a sassy man apocalypse. Like, why do I have to tell you that I want flowers? Why do I have to tell you that I want to be taken out on a date? Why do I have to tell you that gifts are a necessity in a relationship or hell, even in the dating process, if you're courting me appropriately or properly? I mean, I, I, I really just want to know these things. like, especially and, and I'm thinking this woman might be a tether. Not a bad looking chick. Lot to, way too much makeup. Just by the way she keeps rubbing her hair like she's not used to a, a fly weave. You know, she's rubbing her hair like she's not used to a fly weave. It's not a bad looking chick. Nice breast on her. Nice lips on her. The makeup thing. What does she look like without all that damn makeup? Especially after you've dealt with someone who has already set the bar or you are an independent woman and you get your own bread. And okay, okay, no, that, that's dumb mammy babble. What are you talking about? Yeah, okay. You're an independent woman, you got your own bread, but you won't do to do all this shit for you. Okay. A little shit a nigga do for you can't impress you, but you do appreciate it. So the little stuff a nigga do won't impress you, but you, you want him to do it. Which one is it? That don't mean just don't do it. It, that that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't send mixed mix signals, ma'am. What what kind of mammy babble are you doing, ma'am? Uh, yeah, that little shit you doing don't mean nothing, but still do it. If you don't do it, you sassy. What are you talking about? What are these women talking about? Me, don't show up for me. 
Because your ass will get cut off and the next nigga will be on his way in about uh, 15 minutes. Okay, okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, who's raising these people? Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I hear that echo. That echo sound, you know, that echo means empty apartment. <laughs> it, it, that echo, there's, she has a Section 8 echo in there. Yeah? Yeah, some FBA sisters did her hair because she's not used to a fly hairstyle. But yeah, talking about, oh, I'll get another nigga. Ma'am, go do you. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cleavage is hanging out. Ma'am, you mammy babbling. And yeah. it's the makeup. When I see all that crazy, the makeup is way kind of extreme. What, what do you look like without that makeup and all of that chicken babble? It's a lot of chicken babble going on here. You think? And the thing is, see... Y'all can't do all that chicken babble while you, because she looked like she might be in her mid to late 20s, late, probably hitting up on 30 pretty soon. And the chicken babble, that's not going to work because that wall is coming. You better start getting your mind and your conversation right because that wall is coming. You, you holding on, you got them titties out trying to catch. But the thing is, you can catch, you can get a nigga. Yeah, a nigga can come, but a nigga ain't going to stay. Yeah, you can You can get a nigga. A nigga can come in 15 minutes, a nigga can come in five minutes. For titties, we always show up for titties. You dig? Everybody likes titties. Yeah, we going to show up. Are we going to stay? No. You dig? Titties are like popcorn. Everybody likes popcorn. If you go on a date, you go to the movies, and you're going to go to dinner later, you're going to get some popcorn as an appetizer. Everybody's going to get some popcorn. Why not? I won't get too full off the popcorn. It's temporary. If you're at the mall, if you're anywhere, you see some popcorn, you're going to get it. I'm going to eat dinner later. I'm going to spend some real money in my real time at a nice restaurant. But I'm going to deal with this popcorn right now. It's quick, it's easy, it's there, it's good, I like it. Popcorn is popcorn. And them titties is popcorn. Everybody loves titties. You, If you ugly with titties, damn, this ugly motherfucker got some nice titties. You understand? Titties go a long way. We'll deal with them titties, but we ain't going to stay. You got to have something else to make a nigga stay besides the titties. Eh? Them titties, that's an appetizer. Titties are fun. I'm going to have a little fun. But after I'm done with the titties, I got to go. Those titties were fun. Thank you so much. You You understand? So just because you can get somebody in 15 minutes, that don't mean anything. Can you get somebody to stay for 15 years? If you get somebody to stay, then you can pop your collar. Eh? Man. Oh, yeah, speaking of accent, yeah, people are talking about this Asian girl. I think she's from Thailand or whatever. There's this thing now. They're about to blow this woman up. And I, we're blowing up by talking about her. I know who you're talking about. Well, I, I forgot her name, but there's this Asian girl who's, who talks with a black scent. And at first, a lot of people thought, okay, you know, she came over from Thailand. She was trying to explain her black scent, why she kind of talks with a black scent. But looking at some other videos, some of this stuff seems very forced, to be honest. Some of her black scent seems a little forced. Um, here's the video of this girl. Hold on one second. Now, this is her explaining why she talks with a black scent. This is her explaining it. All right. Hold on one second. People, after hearing my voice for the first time. All right. 
So she's talking about how she grew up in the South. Listen. First of all, what? Yes, I have an accent because I ain't from here. I was born in Thailand and I grew up in Georgia for a decade. And then I fucking moved to Nebraska. Ain't she over there, by the way? How the hell y'all gonna tell me how I'm supposed to sound like? You want me to speak in broken English, bitch, bitch? The fuck? Or would you like for me to speak formally to you, sir? Fuck out of here, man. All right. So, so certain people, she she told people she talked with the black accent because she grew up in the South. She came over here and grew up in the South. And there's a lot of videos of her with this black scent. Hold on. They got her trying to pronounce words in her black scent. All right. Like this video here. Hold on. Hold on. They're giving her a list of words to say to see if she can pronounce them. So I'm going to pick some words from my previous video. And the first word is axe. A days, oh, fervor, scrubbery, screech, shrimp, scared. It's an easy one. Thank, rule, and a bonus run. Earn, earn, and earn, earn. Mm hmm So I'm going to pick some words from Okay, her saying screech and strawberry, I ain't buying that. And, yeah, this is Aquafina part two. This is, yeah, this is Aquafina part two. And this is this right here showed me that these are forced accents she's trying to use because she's talking about getting some soul food. Now, listen to this. This right here made me say, okay, this is cat. Hold on, right here. Hold on. So we got the fried fish with yam, mac and cheese, cornbread. Got some soul food. Okay. So we got the fried fish with yam, mac and cheese, cornbread. Okay. Now this is all cap. Don't nobody say no cornbread. That only person say that shit is people in slave movies. Don't nobody pronounce it cornbread. That's cap. That right there. Like, oh, okay. Who do you know say some damn cornbread? It's cornbread. Even in the South. Cornbread. Don't nobody say that shit in the damn South. All right? Don't nobody in the South say no cornbread in this day and age. That right there, okay, this is cap. This is all cap. She says she grew in Georgia. People in Georgia don't say cornbread. Cornbread. Stop it. You think? Nobody. We don't say that. That's fake as hell. So we got to watch these people. Who come around with these black scents and all of that. Yeah, because I ain't impressed by that. I ain't impressed by that whatsoever. We got to watch that. Yeah. Boy, we are, we are rent free on everybody's mind. Boy, everybody watches what all eyes on FBA, ain't it? All eyes are always on us. Everybody's watching what we do. Uh, speaking of Asians over there and... um. And was it Japan or Korea? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on. Let me show y'all this. Hold on. One, one second. Hold on. One second. Let me find this article. Uh, where is that? Where is that? Over there in, um, in, in Asia. Boy, they are really going crazy with the black hairstyles over there. And I've been talking about this for a few years. Hold on. Hold on. So, yeah, they've been going crazy with the black hairstyles in Asia. Hold on. Let me, let me find this stuff for you real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and I've been, I, you know, I've been doing broadcast about this for years. So where is this? Where is this? Uh, da, 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 da. 
Where is it? Da, 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 da. I'm gonna sh let me just show this. Let me show Afro textured hairstyles. Okay, let me show this. Let me just do it without the Already volume. Ah, 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 let me take the volume down. Okay. Well, not even in Asia, even the, the community over here. This is the news, so I can play this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let the let me let the commercial play through. Hold on. All right. Okay. So look at this. So this is a story in Houston. Hold on. So this was on the news. All right. Come on, man. God damn. I'm trying to get this thing together. Y'all bear with me one second. All right. All right. Hold on. You've never considered styling your hair as an art. You may want to reconsider that. There's so much that can be done with it, even molding bone straight hair to mimic Afro textured hair. It's become popular within the Asian community. Take a look at that. When I first saw it, I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Companies like Hippie Buddha use different techniques to create the illusion of curls, coils and even locks. Joining us to talk about it, Eva Go, Francesca Jones, who has Asian and black ancestry and hairstylist, CC Mason. Glad to have you all here on the fa CC when you saw that hair woo woo woo. What went through your mind, CC? <laughs> <I had> mixed emotions. Because <laughs> um, you can go either way. Yes. So from mixed emotions as a hairstylist, you always want to learn the new trends because that's that's money for you. Mm -hmm. But as a black woman you think about like, okay, well, they talked about our hair being nappy for so many years. Okay, so look, my thing is this. They already control the black hair care industry over there in Asia anyway, so they're like, hey, we might as well sell some of these products to our own people. You understand? We, we might as well make our own people the face of these products. Yeah, because they, they emulate the style anyway. Yeah. So I'm telling all eyes are always on us. All eyes are on us. They study us left and right, man. We are rent free. Y'all don't understand how rent free we are on people. We are rent free, dude. Yeah. They call it a punch perm. Man, we stay rent free. Speaking of hairstyles um, and speaking of tethers and all of that stuff, um, I, I always tell y'all that you can tell um, a divester who's a tether or somebody when they walk around with a janky wig. You can always tell somebody who's a, a potential tether when they're walking around here talking crazy and their wig is janky and they're comfortable walking around with a janky wig. Because you can tell they don't have foundational black American friends. Because foundational black American women they don't let women walk around with janky wigs without saying anything. I've always said this. That's one thing about FBA women. If your wig is janky, an FBA sister is going to pull you to the side, especially if you're a relative, especially a relative. But even a stranger, if we see somebody with a $5 divestment wig, we're going to pull them to the side. Our FBA sisters are going to be like, girl, I got to holler at you. Or let, let it be a relative or a friend. Let me holler at you. Here's a video of a girl wearing a janky wig and her family, her FBA family, they are clowning her ass. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This girl got on a janky wig. I don't know why she got this janky wig on. And people, I think she's doing a live. They're asking her, are you in search of a white man? What are you doing? She has on this janky wig and listen to the family. The family is giving her the business. This is what I'm talking about. Listen. Oh, yes. That's a picture of me with a hammer. Are you in search of a white man? No. Um, which, what I'm doing? Ariana, you look a hot mess. A hot mess. Though. I've been trying to tell her. I don't see it. That, that wig looks synthetic. The it's bang. ugly. Come on now. Take that off. You ain't going away with that no wig. Take that wig off, man. You're not she, going. she really thinks she's doing something. I'm you need to stay here. You're going out looking like that. Honey, honestly, uh, wig don't look good. Uh, no, they just came like, <laughs> like they just came for me. I'm talking about all of them. Ain't nobody coming for you with that on. 
But look how bouncy it is. Do your wig bounce like that? <sighs> Whatever. So yes, I'm doing a wig giveaway. So just uh, ain't nobody gonna want that. That's the one you're giving away. This from T Moon. This Ariana, is, is you you giving oh. it away? Yes, I am giving this one away. I'm giving this away too. Please, somebody take it. Do about what? Your face card overshadows the. So the f the family was like, you ain't going nowhere with us with that shit on. <laughs> FBA women are going to let you know. <laughs> That's why I can tell my ain't got no FBA friends. You don't hang around us if you got on a wig and ain't nobody saying nothing. FBA family ain't going to let you out that house without lighting you up with that bullshit on. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Even the kids are clowning. Girl, you scaring me. Take that off. It's ugly. <laughs> they said ugly in three syllables. That's ugly, auntie. It's ugly. <laughs> in three syllables. <laughs> Lord. Well, yeah, when you see somebody walking around with a janky wig and they're comfortable, they ain't got no FBA friends. You ain't from here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let me get out of here, man. It's been real. We got 7,000 people in here. We in here heavy. Listen, everybody, go get your Root Work deodorant. Rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. Man, we got that Lucky Lavender. Oh, my goodness. This is the, the hottest seller in the game right here. We got the Citrus Charm. We got the Mango Mojo. And we got the Biloxi Blueberry scent. This is the hottest deodorant on the streets right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Musty Fighter. You will not be musty rocking this. The hottest deodorant on the streets. Root Work at RootWorkStyle.com. Just the energy of this deodorant is popping. It has High John the Conqueror root in it. That's something that our foundation of Black American ancestors used to use for strength and, and courage and good energy. It's infused in the deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. Get that. And also, guys, a lot of y'all been wanting to get this book by itself. You can get the book at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. This is a great book for your children. Hidden Heroes from A to Z. Get this. You can get the book by itself now. Um, it's been real. And ladies and gentlemen, this week, um, The Adventures of Bucci Bear, brand new episode of The Adventures of Bucci Bear, ladies and gentlemen, coming up this week, the funniest episode by far. Um, Y'all stay tuned for that. And that's going to be appearing on FBAStream.com, FBAStream.com. Anyway, y'all, it's been real. Um, Puppy Akute.